Good afternoon. Thank you everybody for joining. Just want to do a real quick uh, audio check. If you can hear me, could you just raise your hand? Great, thank you. And we'll go ahead and get started. So this is the coordination group meeting for the groundwater sustainability planning process for all of the adjacencies to the Delta Mendota subbasin. And what I'm gonna do um, is ask a couple of people to go ahead and open their mics. So um, Andrew, I see you're online with us. Uh, if you could go ahead and open up your mic. Uh, Leslie, also, if you could open up yours and we'll go ahead and start hopping in. We'd love to hear from anybody that's on the line with us. All you need to do if you'd like to talk is to go ahead and uh, raise your hand and I'll be happy to open up your mic and you can feel free to hop in with that. Uh, if you are on the phone, be sure to put in your PIN number so that I can undo your phone. So there's a couple of folks that um, have to put in their PIN before I can unmute you. If you've put in your pin and I'm still not seeing you show up, you may have to call back in. So with that, um, we do have right now about 15 folks online. I have about 30 RSVPs, so I'm expecting other folks to join us shortly. Uh, but it looks like we've got a pretty good representation of most of the places. And we'll be going through a checklist a little bit later on, so we'll we can catch up with who else is on the line at that point. So Andrew, let me just uh, turn this over to you if you don't mind and um, go ahead and welcome folks. Um, we can also just mention what we're gonna do today is cover the report from the Delta Mendota team on where they're at with the overall GSP coordination effort, both in their own sub-basin as well of, as with the rest of you. Um, and then we'll do a quick run through for everybody round robin on your GSP configurations, consultants and schedules, have a quick communications team update, uh, check in with you to see if there's anyone else missing, pick up any other business, and next steps, and we'll get you out of here. So, Andrew, take it away. Thanks, Lisa. <clears throat> uh, my internet connection is not too great, so let me know if you're having any trouble hearing me, and I'll call in. Um, thanks for organizing this. I'm glad that we have an opportunity to sort of circle back. I'm thinking that everybody would have a little bit more opportunity to get some things done following the submission of the grant application. Um, and I think that's sort of what we'll start with. I know that we are waiting internally to get the final notice and sort of enter into the grant agreement for the, the sustainable groundwater planning monies. Um, but in the meantime, within the Delta Mendota subbasin, one of the things that we are currently working um, on quite a bit is the coordination agreement. So. We currently have six GSPs that are planned to be developed within the subbasin, and because of that, we have to develop a coordination agreement. And there are also some shared costs that we've identified, so we, we have another cost share agreement to go with it. Um, the status of that coordination agreement is it's, it's, it's basically complete. We ran into some issues regarding Brown Act compliance. Um, it was determined that the coordination committee um, formed under the coordination agreement would be subject to the Brown Act. And so we're going through final revisions to include the proper language with respect to a majority and quorums and whatnot. So if other folks are dealing with uh, coordination agreements and would like to talk offline, we have a lot of uh, sort of lessons learned in the development of that document. And we basically have a, a, a finished document or pretty close within the next week or two. Um, as far as schedule and data issues, I think I'm going to kick that over to our consultant, Leslie Dumas, to talk on that. Great. And um, so is, I don't see Leslie online. Is she sitting with you? She's not. She was going to call in, so maybe uh, we can give her a minute. Uh, I, can, I can touch a little bit, I guess, while we wait for her to get on. Okay, um, great. So one of the other things regarding our coordination agreement coordination committee is we have a couple working groups formed underneath that coordination committee so we have a technical working group and we also have a communications working group and so the technical work group has just gone through a, a large data collection effort and has started forming our sub basin wide monitoring network um and that was that was last month's meeting in march and the April meeting for the work group is going to be focused solely on subsidence 
and groundwater dependent ecosystems. Um, subsidence is obviously going to be a discussion that we're going to need to have across basin boundaries as well, since it's not just focused within the Delta Mendota subbasin. So I think that topic will be good for this group as a whole as well. Um, maybe after in the next couple of weeks, once we're able to sort of proof or check our data and align ourselves a little bit better. The working group, the communications working group is focused on planning our first public workshop. And the, the thoughts there are to have three different workshops, basically up one up in the city of Patterson, the next down um, in Los Banos, and then the third either in Mendota or Tranquility. And our hopes are to have a consistent PowerPoint presentation from a single speaker, kind of on general Sigma information, and then have a representative from each of the GSAs or a majority of the GSAs, sort of as a as a, a roundtable um, kind of poster session. And our, our facilitator helping us develop that and work through that. Um, we'll have some Sigma outreach materials, general flyers to have each agency distribute prior to the workshop. Um, and I think we're looking at the week of May 15th for each of those workshops. Great, thank um, you. Also, Leslie is online. So, uh, Leslie, your mic's open if you want to hop in. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so, I, I, I think the only thing that um, I'm not sure if Andrew mentioned or not is part of what we're trying to do with, it, as, with the technical working group is we move forward towards developing the kind of basin-wide discussions, like the basin-wide hydrostatography and the bigger picture that we need to have in addition to our relative GSP picture, since there's six GSPs. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Is we're starting with kind of what I think of as low-hanging fruit, is looking at what documents are out there that have been developed by the various groups that we could start from and build that discussion from. And in that, we came across the groundwater quality assessment reports, or GARs, that need to be done for the Irrigated Lands Program. And the Westside Coalition, uh, for the most part, encompasses the majority of the Delta Mendota Basin. And when you add in the Grasslands GAR, you've, you've got like 95% of the basin covered. And the descriptions in there, in the GARs, were discussed at the last technical working group. And we all agreed that you know there's already been a lot of work that's been done. It's been accepted by the parties that are here. We feel it's reflective of the basin. It's relatively recent in the last year or two. And that we felt that that's the perfect starting point for some of these discussions relative to basin setting and HCM. And um, because not only is the work already done, which you know saves some effort, but more importantly, there's a number of, of programs, of uh, planning and, and groundwater management programs that are in play right now, like the Irrigated Lands Program. And we felt it important that What's in the GSPs are reflective of that as well, and if and if at all possible, could parallel it, so that ultimately you're seeing a convergence of all these types of programs into one truly integrated groundwater management program. Great, thank you, Leslie. And then um, one of the things that we had kind of highlighted for this discussion was is. Um, so, Andrew, you had uh, mentioned to me that you'd gotten just a partial report back on schedule from folks, and I did try to highlight that um, in terms of the uh, report backs that we get from everybody, but in, in terms of schedule, um, you, you guys are getting pretty close where you really need to know what those merger point looks look like, right? Yeah, we yeah. are. Well, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we are. And I, I was actually going to say, now that we're at our own internal point of, of knowing sort of what our next milestones are, it might it might be a little bit simpler to get some updates. Maybe we don't need full schedules, but maybe we can get those key milestones from other folks. And so maybe Leslie has more input on that. Okay, great. Go ahead, Leslie. Well, um, so I think we're, we as a basin are coming up against this point where um, five of the GSPs are already have models in place that they're planning on using and are already working on relative to the they're developing their water budgets and for us for the the six which is the north and central folks um, we're waiting on the release of uh, hopefully the cdhm2 model which we're anticipating in the next week or so and i think the key there is that we're going to be starting this modeling work and it's going to and that's where these sub basin and interflows are going to become more and more important and 
um, the, the question mark becomes how do we you know, how do we interface with our adjoining subbasins if they're not at that point without putting us out, ourselves into a position where we either um, can't or, or we, we may end up having or there's some disparities between what the models are saying and our and our agreement um, across inter sub basin flows. And then second of all, um, just scheduling. How do we do this so what we don't get behind in the work that we have to do? Great, thank you. I, um, so that'll be something to really keep an eye on. And then um, you also, in our pre-work for this meeting, mentioned to me that there had been some data issues and, and maybe some other potential sticking points. Is that mostly related to the model or were there others? Now the data points, we're, we're, we're cranking through those actually. Um, it's it's we're filling in a lot of the holes right now um, and having some kind of residual data sets that we're trying to get our, get our hands on and, and fill in the blanks on. Um, but I thought we, in our March meeting, we made a very good first cut at understanding where we have wells, where we have wells with incomplete information, and where we have gaping holes that are going to need to be filled. And um, But I think the bigger piece is going to be, it's, it's for, for us, from the standpoint of developing our GSP, our work efforts are really going to kick into motion once we get hold, once we get that model in house and we can start working on it. And um, yeah, that, that's I think from the standpoint of the sub basins all working together, that's where I have concerns because that's that's where you have to have these agreements. And if we continue, and this is, this is true both intra basin as well as inter basin, because once we start moving forward, if nobody else is ready to meet us at that point to discuss these these flows. What does that mean in terms of either us slowing our schedule down, which we don't want to do, uh, or taking the risk of, of having a disparity in our assumptions that, that we can't, we, we haven't resolved. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Um, any Anything else that you all want to add before we check in with the others and see how they're doing? Not from my standpoint. How about you, Andrew? Um, no, no. I think I think that's it. The the only other thing that I wanted to possibly discuss, and it just depends on, I guess, the group's uh, constituents and how they're working to overlap other efforts, um, IRWM efforts, disadvantaged community involvement program efforts, and without duplicating some of these outreach efforts or utilizing other grant funds for some of these similar products. Oh, great. We, um, I did have an agenda item just to talk about that specifically, kind of what the communication teams are doing. And I did have a chance to talk to uh, Stephanie, who's, who's also on the line. And sh so Sheena can kind of brief people on that. And then fortunately, I have the benefit of being able to keep track of what, what you guys are doing in your sub-basin as well through Kirsten, your facilitator. So um, with that, let's go ahead and, and jump into the rest of the agenda. And um, as mentioned, you have received some information already from some of the folks. Um, I'm looking here. Do I have anybody from San Joaquin on the line? And there may be folks that are, are consultants, and I don't recognize your name from East San Joaquin. If, you'll, uh, if you could raise your hand, I'll be happy to open your mic. I'm not seeing anybody. Um, so I can just give you a quick update on that. Um, they are moving forward. Let me get this out of the way. Um, they're moving forward with their process. They've kind of been working on what their model will look like. They've gone ahead and started the process of um, getting their consultants on board. Um, they are also looking at doing a boundary modification. If they do a boundary modification, that will make them their own sub-basin. And right now, though, without that, they'll have to be coordinating with the Tracy folks, um, so the East Contra Costa Tracy. So that's in the mix right now. Not quite sure how that's going to turn out. I do have somebody from Deidre Online that should feel free to jump in if you'd like to. Um, Amanda, I'll open your mic. Feel free to jump in on anything if it's of interest to you. So uh, with that, do I have anybody from Stanislaus, uh, Tuolumne Rivers, Groundwater? And if so, again, just raise your hand. I'll be happy to open your mic. Um, so I see Gordon's mic or hand up. But uh, Gordon, your f phone is not live, so you need to put in a pin. 
and you all can feel free to chat with me as well. I'll come back if for some reason we miss anybody, but just raise your hand if you want to jump in. Um, same thing, um, they, now they've gotten you their stuff already, right, Andrew, in terms of their schedule from out of Modesto? Yes. Okay, so this one's still pretty standard. Oh, and yeah, Gordon, I see you there, but I'm just not um, able to get your, and Leslie, did you want to hop in? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just, I had a quick question. Um, the, basin boundary mod the basin boundary modification that East San Joaquin is planning to do, mm -hmm. what's the modification for, do you know? Uh, yeah, well, they're trying to separate out from East Contra Costa. So right now, that would that would give them their own boundary, and then they wouldn't have to do. Um, right, right now, they're looking for one GSP for East Contra Costa and East San Joaquin. Is it, is, the, is it, is it consumeness or is it? I don't. No, this is over. Our, this, is our Tracy, this is Tracy Subbasin. Oh, okay. So they cross over. Okay, got that. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. they cross over on both sides. So there's East San Joaquin side, which is Eastern San Joaquin. That's their own. And then they have a crossover. So they're trying to get a, bond, a boundary modification. If not, they'll do one GSP with Tracy. And then if they get a separate one, they'll split them out and do two. So, okay. yeah, that's what's going on with that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and um, once again, uh, let's see, I see... Gordon, um, I'd love for you to talk. Just need to maybe put your pin back in or call back in again so that I can open your mic. Okay, uh, East Turlock, anybody from there that wants to jump in? Okay, and again, they're also up to date. They've gotten their stuff into Andrew, and so all of this, this updated stuff should be correct. Um, we've got Merced. They've also gotten in all of their stuff. And I don't actually see Lacey on the line, so we'll go ahead. She RSVP'd, but she may hasn't hopped on yet, so we can come back to her if I see her. But again, this should be all up to date. And they're also they're also coordinating um, on some other things. So that one's pretty productive. Um, how about uh, Chowchilla? So I've got a couple of different folks that are at least from the consulting team on this. Will, do you, do you want to talk? Um, Go sure. ahead. Can you hear me? I can. Um, I think, well, on both Chowchilla and Madera, we're teamed with David's Engineering, and I think Pete, Pete Leffler is taking the lead for LSEE, and I think Brian Thorson for David's. And I don't know if Ryan's on the call or, or whether Pete is. Um, I'm actually I'm here, Will. This is Nick. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Nick Watterson. He's he's working with Pete on both those bases. Go ahead, Nick. Okay. Yeah, I can I can speak to that. I guess the you know as far as the things that you've that you've got populated on your on the chart here, I think the uh, the schedule elements are. Um, are, are as, as described here, yeah, we're planning on having a draft GSP out in, in July for, um, uh, you know, for review and then, and then, and then certainly finalizing it, in, uh, by January. We're, we're just right now exploring, exploring some modeling, uh, numerical modeling options, um, including, um, including, you know, mod flow and IWFM options there. Um, and with you know, with some interest on on the C2B sim fine grid and what um, and what that shapes up to be looking like, um, so that's kind of the that's the uh, probably the in a nutshell where things stand with Chow Chill and and I think that you could uh, we're we're also working on the Madera sub basin, so uh, largely that 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 same information would apply there. Great. That's great. And then also, um, I don't see um, Brian on the phone yet. Um, I do have I do have Stephanie. I know she's working on that as well. Stephanie, your mic's open if you if you want to hop in at any point. Um, let's go ahead and move on down. So we've already heard from Delta Mendota. And if I, are there any of the other um, 
contractors that want to jump in. So, uh, Jared or anybody like that, just raise your hand if you do. I did get a chance to, to check in with the technical work group for this group this morning and let them know um, they knew that Andrew and Leslie were going to be in this meeting. So, they didn't feel necessarily that they needed to be here just because they were already engaged. Um, so, farmers, you're actually part of that group. I, Will, is there anything you want to say about that? Um, not a whole lot other than we're going to be utilizing an existing ModFlow model that we've developed previously for them, and um, and and hopefully they'll be easily integrated with the CVHM2 model that the North Central group is going to be utilizing. And um, and I think generally as far as the the schedule, it's going to be um, generally similar to the North Central region, even though it's not really listed on there very much. But it's going to be, you know, kind of like similar to others, kind of a mid-2019 you know, draft and um, and then going from there. I think one of the challenges for that sub basin is with the multiple GSPs and the the level of coordination that will be required is part of that effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, and same thing. Um, anybody from Elisa or from Grasslands that wants to hop in. I know um, you're all again part of the same group that's been coordinating with Andrew. So, not seeing any hands up. I'll go ahead and keep going. And by the way, I, I expect we'll end this meeting early, which I know is perfectly okay with everybody. Okay. Uh, so I just mentioned um, Tracy Subbasins. Uh, with with the East San Joaquin because of that crossover. I do see Eric on the line. Eric, do, um, do you want to jump in on this one at all? Eric Brennan. Okay, your mic's open if you'd like to talk. All right, I'll go ahead and I'll move on down if Tracy wants to hop in later, feel free to do that. Or maybe, um, is there anybody um, uh, from Ludorf Skelman Nini that wants to jump in on this? Yeah. Can, can you hear me, Lisa? I can. Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. I'll let Debbie Cannon, she's from our firm, working in the Tracy Basin. Hi, hi Lisa. Um, hi, Debbie. I can update um, a little bit on the schedule for the Tracy Sub Basin. Perfect. Uh, what we had in the uh, Prop 1 grant was that the draft GSP was going to come out June of 2021 and public review was for fall 2021 and then the final GSP was January 2022. So that's the only addition that I have for your table there. That's great. And um, do, I don't think you were on the call uh, when we talked about getting the schedule information into to Andrew. Uh, that's, but it sounds like we'll have a little better direction pretty soon. But I know you guys aren't on, aren't on exactly the same crunch crunch time frame, so it's a little less troubling at this point. Okay, and did you want to say anything else about what we what I just mentioned on the boundary or the GSP process with with uh, San Joaquin? No, I think you said it. Okay. Okay. How about uh, I don't see anybody from Waterform online. Okay, I'll follow up with them on the phone. Okay, and how about South, how about Kings? Okay, I did have a cancellation from Kings, so I'm not sure if that was a, a conflict or not. I, um, Craig, are this, Craig Marl, I know you're on the line. Do you, do you have any updates on this just out of things you happen to know? On, uh, on, on, 
uh, yeah, on okay. any of these. Yeah. Mm, no, not really. Um, I know they're moving forward with their overall internal um, coordination agreement. They're getting close to finalizing the uh, dispute resolution with legal counsel uh, among the, ver the seven GSAs. And um, uh, the North Kings GSA, which doesn't touch this, you know, they're within the Kings, Kings Sub Basin, but they don't right. touch um, these other areas. They're moving forward on their planning processes and probably fairly well ahead of the curve on uh, compared to some of the other GSAs in the area. Okay. And um, do I have anybody from um, PNP that wants to hop in on this? Okay. Well, we'll hope keep going then. I'll go down to um, to Larry West Side. Uh, Katrina, I see you, you on the line. I'll go ahead and, if you don't mind, um, open your mic. Sure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, we're underway on our GSP development. We hope to have something um, for our board's review at the beginning of next year. Um, we've also substantially completed our baseline model. It's, it's kind of in the phase where we can start running scenarios. Um, to determine if management actions or um, other strategies can be included in our groundwater sustainability plan. Um, I can go into more detail if you'd like, but that's a brief high-level summary of the status of our GSP development. Great. Does anybody have questions for Katarina? Well, you seem to satisfy whatever their thirst for knowledge was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Pleasant Valley, I don't have anything on this. So does anybody anybody have any updates on this one? This is not I'm I am actually gonna make a note to myself. I, I have twenty twenty two down for them, but I haven't talked to them. Okay. Um, how about Kawea and um I, it, Stephanie, do you feel, is that something you can talk about? She's got me muted. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, anything else? Um, do you happen to know, uh, Katrina, on anything on uh, else on Kern? Um. No, I don't know about Kern, but I know Pleasant Valley. I believe their Fulton is Provost and Pritchard. Okay. Um, just to let you know, and I believe it's Calvin is their contact. Okay. Calvin? Yes. Great. Thank you. That'll make it easier for me. Thanks. Okay. Um, so let's see, Stephanie. Um, okay. So, Stephanie, try it again. I'm, I'm showing you as being uh, self-muted. Yep. It there works you are. Now. Okay. <laughs> I was self muted and muted by you. So it was a joint okay. effort. Uh, so I don't know if Craig's on the phone. He's handling most of the outreach and engagement. Um, but the Kuwait sub basin, they're having their back on schedule with regular coordination committee meetings. Each of the GSAs are doing a separate GSP. Um, they're moving along okay at this point. There was some um, time getting the GSP contract in place that is being done for the full, the or the overarching pieces, the piece that each of the individual GSAs have is being done by GEI. And then GEI is doing the um, GSP for Greater Kauia and Mid Kauia. And then Provost and Pritchard is, is doing the uh, GSP for East. Um, and they're working on some of those pieces and they should be having a meeting probably on April 18th to go over some of those components at their coordination committee. Great, thank you. Um, Craig, did you want to jump in? And Michael, I also have your mic open. Yeah, I, uh, I think Stephanie got it from my perspective. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, the only other thing I would add is that the uh, mid uh, Advisory Committee is going to be meeting on Friday, and uh, we'll be talking about the assessment and going through SkyTemp and what was the other piece? Uh, it was the 
groundwater allocation um, approaches that would be considered for the uh, all the GSAs in the subbasin. Great, thank you. Okay, so for Kern, um, this one's a little far afield. I'm not sure that I have anybody online from that's working down there. Uh, oh, so Andrew, I'll go ahead and open your mic. Do do you have something? And go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, I had a question for Kitty actually regarding the model. <clears throat> Does that sure. model uh, uh, also modeling subsidence, projected subsidence? Yeah, we're using the farm package for ModFlow, so we have that capability. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, let's move on down then. Um, so again, um, I wasn't, I know this Kern one was a little far afield. These are just kind of minor touch-ins. So that was the basics on our check-in calls. Uh, does there anybody that wants to add anything that we didn't cover so far in the check-in? Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the agenda. So um, the next item was uh, updates from the communications teams. And um, Craig, you, you've already had a chance to start a little bit on that. Is there anything else that you'd like to add in terms of what you're doing? What basins all are you working in? Uh, the uh, Greater Kauia, Mid Kauia, North Kings GSA, South Kings GSA, okay. and then uh, up in North, but that's anything down South. Okay, any, um, so you had a chance to talk a little bit about some of the meetings. Anything mm -hmm. else that you want to tell us about going on with, with your communications efforts? Uh, we have an adopted uh, communications plan for the North Kings GSA. We'll be moving forward with implementation. Um, we'll be meeting on April 10 to go over the mm -hmm. um, budget for uh, all the implementation actions, and we'll be starting uh, implementing probably early May. Great, thank you. Um, and then Andrew had a chance to mention um, some of the things that were going on with the um, uh, I mentioned all the things that were going on with planning for the Delta Mendota. There's a question about whether or not there is a coordinated calendar of all the GSA meeting dates, times, and locations. That's from Jeff. Uh, Jeff, there isn't one now, but why don't we take that as an action item? So I'll go ahead and write that down. And I think... Um, the way to do that is maybe just make sure we'll maybe set up a central location and just get on everybody's notice lists. Uh, and then I'll also work with the communications teams in terms of dates that are not yet on the calendar that are being set. So for example, Andrew was talking about some of the communications efforts and May the May timeframe for the public workshops that they're going to do. Um, so, and Andrew, do you want to say anything else about that in terms of um, the communications things that you're doing up with your committee? I, I do have something I was going to share with the group. I'll go ahead and pull this up just so they can see it. Um, this is a copy of the governance structure for uh, the sub-basin, and this, this covers kind of the overall GSP coordination effort, so you can kind of see there's a larger GSP coordination committee. There's the communications work group and the technical work group over here, and then people feed into those different functions. Then down here, you can see how um, the sub-base uh, sub coordination committee, how the communications work group is formed and how people have different representatives that feed into that. And then the same thing is true on the technical work group side. So this is what they've done for that sub-basin just to manage all the moving parts. Um, most of you don't have anything quite as complicated, but um, this was kind of a nice rubric to just show how the different parts work together. And I'll be happy to share this if anybody wants it. Um, actually, I can just, just send me a note if you want it. I don't imagine everybody wants it, but if you'd like it, I'll be happy to send it to you. 
Um, okay. So, Andrew, anything else you'd like to say about the communications? Um, not not particularly. No, I mean uh, we do have a deltaengineer.org database and website, and that should have most of the meeting dates listed as far as what's upcoming, you know, month to month. Is is that suitable for adding in everybody else's stuff, or is is that going to be too crowded? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I agree. I would be. I would love to see all the the meet, upcoming meetings from all the various sub basins. So, if we wanted to pop in or or get a feel for what other folks are doing, or try to take advantage of learning from others as well. I'm not sure necessarily. Maybe we could make a new tab. We could do a internal sort of tab. That's something we would need to. I would need to talk to Leslie about. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, I I put that down as an action item. So we'll we'll go ahead and and continue working with that and thinking on that. And um, Jeff, if, feel, if you'd like to be part of that conversation, just let me know and I'll be I'll be happy to add you to that conversation. Okay, um, so let's go ahead then. Uh, Stephanie, do you wanna hop in and talk about what you're doing? First of all, let everybody know where you're working. Uh, this is Stephanie Lucero. I'm working in the Turlock Subbasin and the Madera Subbasin, and I'm kind of on point to help discuss what we're doing in the Chowchilla Subbasin. Um, so right now we're doing assessments for Chowchilla. We just got um, kind of started on there, but we have a pretty good idea in terms of stakeholders in that Subbasin. They've got a a pretty good coordination group already uh, working with the GSP consultants. So it's just a matter of making sure that all the necessary people are engaged and know how to engage. So we're doing that assessment and updating a draft communications plan for Chowchilla. Um, for Madeira, we have um, a very close to final communications plan developed. There are some components that are identified as iterative. They require a little more support from the individual GSAs. And so we're working on those GSAs to get that approval and find partners with uh, some of the local community members and nonprofit groups, for example, Spanish translation services or um, the GSAs were looking to do a Sigma 101 workshop, but self-help was already scheduling something around the same time. So we're coordinating those schedules and, and updating the communication plan accordingly. Uh, so right now we are coordinating with self-help in terms of advertising for their uh, Sigma 101 workshop and then we're gonna we re reworked the Madeira's coordination committee um, meetings to come after that because the coordination committee meets and then an hour prior to that meeting we have roundtable open roundtable discussions to allow stakeholders to kind of share their perspectives and update on what they heard um, and then after april we will have a sequencing wherein there is a technical workshop where we discuss the technical components those are open to the public um, and then the following month or you know six to eight weeks after will be the roundtable slash um, coordination committee meeting to kind of review and discuss what was heard and, and hear from stakeholders as well as the representatives from each of the GSAs on how um, the GSAs want to proceed if there's any recommendations or decision points that need to be made for the GSP and milestones. So we have a work plan already set up so we know when those milestones are going to be and then we're going to be communicating with stakeholders and the GSAs based on that schedule. So that's kind of what we're doing in Madeira. Turlock, um, we have a meeting set up in, in a few weeks actually with stakeholders. Um, they have a joint TAC that um, does a lot of the technical work and then there's work groups associated with each of those. Um, so they have a GSP work group that deals with the specific technical components and, and representatives of the GSP team and the, the consultant team and the TAC and then we have a communications committee Communications Committee is going to be doing a World Cafe style workshop um, to review the work plan, identify where there might be um, areas where stakeholders will want a little bit more discussion on com um, particular components of the GSP and then just start hearing from stakeholders where they're concerned or where their um, tension points might be based on the, the work plan so we can make sure that that work plan will fit 
and we can adjust the coordination committee uh, the coordination plan accordingly that coordination plan is pretty much done as well when when is that again april 18th april 18th and just for the group um world cafe style do you want to explain what you mean when you say that so we'll do a plenary overview to, to help frame particular um, buckets of discussion. So for example, we have projects as a potential discussion. So we'll explain you know, why projects are important, how that might fit in the GSP. Um, we also have a discussion on impacts, why, um, what folks might be concerned about when it comes to Sigma. And so we'll explain to, to them, you know, the concepts of undesirable results and where they might want to engage in the GSP development um, as part of the primer. So you do a, just a plenary kind of discussion to give folks a grounding of the different topics. And then you have stations where they can go and ask questions specific to that topic. So our topics, uh, if I were to recall off the top of my head, we have um, you know, general impacts, and that's really going to be focused on the undesirable results and help people kind of understand what that means and what it means to them. Um, we have a session that is going to be, we, we're calling it, um, for shorthand, we're calling it Plan B, but basically we to address the questions of what happens if we don't reach sustainability within our sub-basin and kind of what that looks like in terms of process. Um, we also have just a general um, GSP primer, like I don't know what a GSP is, I don't know what these sections are, so we walk through what the different components of that is, and then we have one for projects. So folks are just concerned with, I, I want you to do this type of project, and that type of project, and that type of project. What are some, what are some of the thoughts, and how are decisions being made for the, pro the projects? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, one of the things that you and I talked about was the possibility of trying to figure out if we could do something more efficient with um, Spanish translation. And so I'm, I'm going to also just maybe have um, Leslie hop in and talk a little bit about what's going on with the DAC outreach and see if there might be some opportunities for some coordination there. Um, did you have anything else to add be before we jump to Leslie, Stephanie? Uh, nope. Great. Okay. So, Leslie, do you mind um, hopping in? Uh, sure. Um, so, where we're at right now is the uh, different. Okay. So, for I assume everybody knows what the DACIP is. It's the Disadvantaged Community Involvement Program, um, which is funding available to IRWM regions under the IRWM program and grant funding. And uh, this, there. So, we're working in the San Joaquin River funding area, which is the IRW regions going from, uh, from, from basically from uh, Sacramento all the way down through Madeira is kind of the base of it. Anyway, uh, so what we're doing right now, what we've done right now is we had a workshop back at the end of February where we hammered out what the grant application was going to look like and how the money was going to be distributed and what pots and stuff like that. We spent March putting together the draft grant application, which will be going out to the IRWM representatives for their review this week. And then um, after they'll have a couple weeks to look at it, and then it'll go to DWR for their review, and then hopefully be submitted um, at the end of April, beginning of March. Uh, so, and then we have to wait until we get the funding agreement in place before we even start on the needs assessment. So we're anticipating that the needs assessment they're thinking that they could, DWR is thinking that if all goes well, um, they could probably turn around our application and give us a funding agreement by the end of May, which means we would start on the needs assessment for the funding area in um, June, which would then also include outreach to disadvantaged communities specifically. And the funding, you know, the, the, the needs assessments are focusing on water, wastewater, and stormwater projects that directly benefit, and that's an important thing, it has to directly benefit disadvantaged communities, um, economically disadvantaged areas, and um, kind of underrepresented communities in those types of areas. So, and then, so there'll be the need, so that all that, so the outreach will happen predominantly in June, um, along with the needs assessments, and then from that point, we then move forward on, um, depending on what kinds of projects and, and, and programs are identified as a result of the needs assessment. 
And um, the reach for the IRWM is quite large, so it, it actually incorporates a, a very large group of folks that are on my little list of people that we're tracking. It doesn't, how, how far south does that go? Um, basically, Madera County is the furthest south that goes, and then you, um, south of that is the Tulare funding area, mm -hmm. and that's a different pot of money and a different group of IRWM regions. So I think the key here, though, is is the idea that there's going to be on the ground outreach into the DAC communities. That is a critical component for the GSA GSP effort, and there's a great opportunity here to coordinate outreach. And that's sort of, um, I think, Andrew, that was one of the things you were probably implying when you were um, mentioning that you, you wanted to just check in on that. And I'm feel free to hop in on this as well. Um, the idea that we're going to be out on the ground talking to a lot of these communities. And one of the things that Stephanie and I were talking about is there is going to be some Spanish language needs and we'll be trying to figure out, we'll work with DWR on this as well for coordination on things like translation and all that. So we're, we're um, Stephanie's looking into some op options at the university. We do have some other subs that, that possibly could help with some of that. Um, but this is, this will be important and we want to be efficient. Also through the uh, IRWM self-help enterprises, and it sounds like Stephanie, you're working them as well. There are some other parties out there that work with these communities pretty regularly, and so they're available as a resource. And I'll just kind of open it up. I, uh, Craig, Stephanie, Leslie, anybody who wants to add into anything I just said. Um, I would just say that if anybody's interested in kind of coordinating their Sigma DAC outreach with the DACIP, DAC outreach. Um, in, in many cases, but not all cases, the player, the people that are representing the IRWM regions are the same people working on Sigma work, but that's not true everywhere. So if you are not, if you're interested in coordinating it and you're not the IRWM rep, please reach out to your IRWM rep so they can bring it forward. They have a stakeholder advisory committee for that, for the DACI program. And so your rep would need to bring that to the, to the SAC. And if you don't know who your IRWM rep is, please feel free to give me a call and I can point you in the right direction. Great, thank you. Okay, um, any anybody else on any other communications teams items? Um, all right, so let's, um, I don't, Debbie, uh, did you want to say anything about that? Just <coughs> Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and check in. We're, um, we're closing in on the end of the agenda here. Um, I, as part of the agenda, and, and if you don't already have it, it's available to you online through this particular webinar. If you look at handouts, see this whole handout is inside of that. Uh, I also emailed that to everybody I had on my mailing list. So um, this is the list of people I sent this invite to. If you see somebody else you think should have received this invite, please let me know and we will be happy to add them. And we're going to over communicate right now. Um, I, I've only had one person ask me to not send them things, so that's probably uh, it's probably good news. Um, for the most part, people seem to be happy to get information regardless of whether or not they're actually attending the meeting. Um, just offhand, if anybody has noticed anything that you'd want to flag, um, I feel free to shout out right this minute. If not, go ahead and drop me a note and let me know. Okay, and coming on down here, um, is there any other business that the group would like to offer? And Amanda, if you don't mind, I see you're online with this. Um, is there anything from that Duda Barrera would like to add in to this session at all? Uh, sure. I actually asked Andrew to send out a, um, a notice. We are having a DWR is hosting a sustainable groundwater management program assistance workshops. And um, those are going to be in a few weeks. There's several workshops that we have scheduled. I'm trying to pull up the flyer as we speak. But um, that one, and I would encourage everyone to do the in-person meeting we do have a webinar scheduled on Friday and um, but the webinar is just going to be the plenary section section so you'll just hear the presentations but the in-person meetings we're going to have 
some information booths, some opportunity to talk with folks and um, the board will be there. So I think it's gonna be really interesting. It's, the objective is to really try to get out and just get information that um, is key to your development of your groundwater sustainability plans. So the, the one in our region is April 24th in Clovis, it's at the Clovis Veterans Memorial District from 1 to 4 p.m. And then we have a nor the Northern California is in Chico and that's on the 23rd. That's And then there's a Southern California location in Ventura on the 25th. Okay. I have I have that notice, Amanda. I can send that out with the uh, to this group as, if you'd like. Oh sure. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Anything else? Um, I did notice, like on your on your um, just. I didn't want to chime in. I kind of want to see if people would um, call in, but or to to talk about Pleasant Valley. I think the reason you don't have um, any information from them may be because they're technically unprioritized. And oh, okay. They're, but they're working because they had a basin boundary mod approval. So they're working, we're working on getting the prioritization out. I keep hearing it soon, but it's been soon for like six months. Okay. Um, and, um, but I think that should be, that once they probably get that, they'll have a more defined schedule. That would be my guess. But they are meeting. Um, there is discussions there. Would um, if you get a chance, could you look at a list again? The list of everybody I sent this to, and make sure that I'm sending invitations to the right people. Yeah, I can do that. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Just so they, just so I know, I I wouldn't know. You know, I might send things, and they're not really going to the right people. Well, it looked from just me following along, it looked like most of the people that I'm aware of were there. So, but. okay, great. Um, all right, and uh, any other business? The floor is open. If anybody has anything else they'd like to raise, okay. Um, suggestions for the next agenda? We'll just uh, right now. I'll go ahead and just follow up on anything we took as an action item. Uh, we'll continue with the check-ins. I will update the chart that I have, and um, I think we should be able to get it a little bit more refined with, with sort of each iteration as we get more schedule information. And are there other things that people, uh, you know, this was kind of the basic outline for this check-in call. We're talking about maybe meeting every mm, three months or so. Uh, any opinions about that? Does that still feel right? Does that feel like the right agenda? Any comments or suggestions? The only thing I would mention is, you know, our deadline's around the corner, mm -hmm. and this, this, the intent of this group is trying to, you know, help with coordination, so maybe sooner than three months would be recommended, but that's okay. just my thought. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and um, send out a dual poll then for about, do you think, do you think two months is, is appropriate? That seems like a better uh, distance. Okay. So we'll send out a, a reminder for two months or a doodle poll for two months. Okay, anything else? Um, does this agenda feel about right to folks? Uh, go ahead, Andrew. Um, the one thing that I think would help me if we aren't gonna meet for a couple months would be to get on everybody's distribution list, which I don't think I am currently. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's best to go through, you know, facilitators maybe, but knowing when these different TAC meetings are, different workshops are, maybe to facilitate different conversations in the interim that would be very helpful let i'll i'll put that down as an action item andrew and uh we can kind of follow up with that so does does everybody want to be on everybody's mailing list or that may not be something everybody wants so yeah i'm not hearing any feedback <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. this is Kitty with lessons. I don't particularly want to be on everybody's uh, interested list, but uh, uh, my neighbors would be great. 
How about this? Uh, I'm going to try to track down what all the lists are. Maybe I'll work with I will work with Craig and Leslie and Stephanie and Amanda, and maybe we can come up with what we think is a master list, and then um, check that with everybody, and then we can maybe have a everybody that wants to opt in. We'll actually just give you the links and let you do that rather than automatically signing everybody up for everything. Um, and then the other option would be similar to what Jeff had suggested. It's trying to figure out if there's some central place we can keep things. So we'll 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 play around with that a little bit. Okay. Well, um, not hearing any other suggestions for a next agenda. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and keep, kind of keep going with the process we have right now, and hopefully we can just keep. Um, information updated. I'll also check in with the folks I haven't heard from and let, let them know if, if they're not going to be here to please let me know ahead of time so I can at least get them updated on the on the worksheet. So with that, um, Andrew, thank you so much for helping to uh, coordinate this. Is any last words um, from anyone online? All right. Well, we'll go ahead and cut you loose. Have a good rest of your day, and I thank you for joining us. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, take care. <laughs>